This is problem number three from section 1.1. In this problem it says, find the domain and range of the following function. And they give you the function f of t equals nine over two minus t. So if we wanna find the domain of, this would be a rational function. So, so rational function. It's always important to identify what kind of function you're working with. We have a fraction, so that's a rational function. If we want to find the domain of that, anytime you want to find the domain of a rational function, typically you're going to take the denominator and set it equal to zero and figure out what value for t makes the denominator zero because we cannot, we cannot have zero. So I'll say 2 minus t cannot equal zero. Then I'm going to subtract 2 from each side. That's negative t cannot equal negative 2. Divide by negative 1 on each side and you get t cannot equal two. So that means that our domain can be any number except for the number two. So the domain of this function is gonna run from negative infinity to two, but can't be two. Staff, the meeting for this morning has been moved to the 21st century classroom. And then from two to infinity. So the domain of the function is negative infinity to two, union two to infinity. Now for the range, the range takes a little bit of work to find the range for a, a rational function. In order to find the range, what we're really looking for is we're looking for the y values that work for our, our inputs or our domain. Uh, and what, what's the range of y values that work? The first thing we want to look at is we want to look at what happens as we get, what happens to the function as we get close to two. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in Let's just call this f of, I'm going to show you what I'm going to plug in here, f of, let's do 2.1, and then let's do f of 1.9. So we're going to plug in 1.9 and 2.1 because they're on either side of 2, right? So 1 is in this cluster, 1.9 is in this cluster, and 2.1 is in this cluster of domain values, but it's close to 2, which is the, the value that doesn't work. And then we're going to pick some values that are close to infinity and close to negative infinity. So I'm going to pick, pick f of, let's just call it a million. And then we'll do f of negative a million. And test both those out. We'll use the calculator to do this. It's pretty easy with the calculator because you can just use... Uh, the store function, which is the bottom left. Let's see here. Where am I going to set it? I'll set it right there. All right. So we'll start by saying 1.9, store it as x. And then we're going to say 2, or actually we're going to use the fraction button. And then we're going to say 9 over 2 minus x. Hit enter. That gives you 90. All right, so f of 1.9 gives you 90. Now, I'm gonna actually do f of 1.99 as well. When I do f of 1.99, 1, I'm even closer to two. So let's go ahead and say 1.99, store it as x, and let's grab that function there. Now I'm at 900, notice that's getting larger. And it got larger by uh, 10 times. So if I go 1.999, I could expect 9,000. So what's this approaching here? Well, this is approaching infinity. So uh, for f of 1.9 and then f of 1.99, as we get closer to two there, we're approaching infinity. And uh, we can say right above here, approaching infinity. Now let's do f of 2.1. So we're going to say 2.1 stored as x and then we're going to grab that function again and we get negative 90 this time and then if I do f of 2.01 right because that's even closer to 
Uh, that's even closer to 2. 2.01, let's store it as x. Let's grab the function again. I get negative 900. Obviously, if you go f of 2.001, you should expect negative 9,000. So in this case, we're approaching negative infinity here. So we know our range so far is going to have negative infinity, and it's also going to have infinity. Now, it could go from negative infinity to infinity. Right now, I'm setting this up like it's not going to. Oop, and I should have done this differently. Let's do that. This should be negative infinity to something, and then we're going to go union something to infinity. I'm setting up like it's not going to go from negative infinity to infinity, but if I find out that it is, then I'll just write one uh, interval notation negative infinity to infinity. But right now, I'm assuming it's not going to. So let's go ahead and check now f of a million. So we're going to say 1 million, store it as x, you know, grab that function. I get a really small number that's negative. So this is uh, essentially, that's really close to 0. So I'm approaching 0. So f of a million approaches 0. Uh, from the negative, you would say negatively. Well, let's just say approach at zero, and then you guys realize that we're approaching it from the negative side. Let's plug in a negative a million now. We're going to store it as x, and then grab that again. And notice that I'm really small again. I got a really small number. I'm close to zero. But this time it's positive. So this side I'm approaching zero from the positive side. So I'm approaching zero in either direction. So zero I'm approaching it from this side, but I'm also approaching it from that side. So zero is a number that we cannot get. And that should make sense with a fraction. I, I can never get zero with a fraction because I mean, I can't divide by zero, so there's no way to get zero. So I'm going to have negative infinity up to zero, union zero to infinity as the range of this function because the values will go to infinity. If you plug in numbers that get close to two that are just below two, they'll go to uh, negative infinity if you get close to two but just above two, and they'll get... Uh, They'll get close to zero if you plug in large values for x and then really small values for x.